That is actually one good thing about Valentine's Day. It will reveal to you how much that man hates you. Um, I'm sorry. I hate, I, I hate Valentine's Day. Um, and again, if you love it, I, I love that for you. I have always hated it. Even when I'm with somebody, I don't celebrate it. Hey, look at my dog. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm easily distracted. I want to show you some examples that prove my point. But before I do, I actually want to tell you a personal story about why I, how I realized how much Valentine's Day sucks. Like, again, I've never really celebrated. I am going to do a video on Valentine's Day because I love that holiday. But um, I didn't date for most of my 20s. Or I didn't really date in my 20s or in most of my 30s. But what I did do um, was observe people and especially when I was working in industries where I got very intimate view of people so when I was a ski uh, instructor and a raft guide and all that stuff I always waited tables at night uh, to supplement my income and then I also waited tables in LA when I was living there and something throughout all my waiting tables experience is that Valentine's Day the people who go out on Valentine's Day to dinner are usually miserable not all of them. Not all of them. There is, I, I believe there's plenty of couples, <laughs> cishet couples, that actually are happy, but they're few and far between. And watching, <laughs> watching this, watching what seemed to me like a couple's performing love, but especially men performing, caring about them by just like, like you could tell they didn't want to be there. Like, you could just tell in their behavior that they're only doing this thing because they have to, because if they don't, they, she might break up with him and realize that he doesn't, she does, he doesn't really like her. So he's just got to do this thing and, like, check this box. But they didn't want to be there. That was, like, really disturbing to notice that. When you wait tables, you observe human behavior in a very unique way way not only the way they treat you like flirt with you in front of their wives and girlfriends and stuff and daughters um but also just the way that they like subtly dismiss their partners and don't want to be there don't talk to them the women the woman is carrying the conversation it's like why are you even here bro like what y'all should have just stayed home and watched tv because that's how not engaged you are or he's watching the tv behind her head to keep up with the game his one true love in life oh look at you now you want to be on camera i'm going to show you a comment that someone left on my video yesterday Someone in another industry that got some insight on just how much men don't even like their partners and they're literally just doing this crap because they feel like they have no choice because they don't want to lose access. It's it's like the Valentine's Day is like the prequel to the shut up ring. As my mutual Cecilia Regina talks about all the time and made that, that term popular. I'm going to tag her. Uh, Valentine's Day is literally like, oh, it's a litmus test for are you going to get a shut up ring? And And... Or did you get a shut up ring? Because the men who are doing this are the ones who are just like so pissed that they have to be with this woman who literally does all this free labor and like risks dying to give them kids and like blah, blah, blah like is like an unpaged Megs worker therapist, blah, 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 blah. They're so mad at this woman that gives everything to them. Ugh. It's okay, I'll take her to dinner and I'll go to the local pharmacy. I mean, it's different in France. They don't sell liquor and cigarettes and Valentine's gifts at this pharmacy here. But in the U.S., the pharmacy is the place where men go to get Christmas presents, Valentine presents, and birthday presents at the last minute because they have put no forethought into it at all because they don't care. They're bare minimum guys, and they have been from the beginning. So this was the comment that was left on my YouTube channel. And um, if you're watching this on another platform, that is where I'm making much longer content and where I'm spending most of my time because these other apps don't pay me. So uh, if you want all my content, go follow me on. <laughs> okay, so look at this. Uh, <laughs> I'm a female and I learned young how much men hate Valentine's Day, i.e. hate having to do stuff for the women who think that <laughs> Uh, working in a drugstore in high school and college and every year we'd unbox the cheapest ugliest crap for valentine's day think animated <laughs> i love this comment uh animated gorillas in plastic cages dancing to wild <laughs> i like the detail of this comically oversized cards and cheap candy and heart-shaped boxes with plastic roses hot glued on top oh my god i if you're not a writer you should write this is amazing by the way that crap would sit untouched for weeks until 
V-Day. On that day, the men would come rushing in, usually after work, and grab whatever they could find in under five minutes. Then they had the nerve to merch to us cashiers about how awful the holiday was for them. Fork you. Thank you so much for leaving this comment. And seriously, you should, you should write if you're not, maybe you are a writer. Do you see what I mean? Drugstore workers and waitresses or servers. We know what's up. Like this is again, like one reason why I didn't date until my late thirties is because I really, nobody could convince me that it would benefit me. Nobody could convince me from what I saw with my grandparents, with, with the grandmas being held hostage or just like, silently hated by their partners, divorced parents, the friends of my parents' friends, my friends being just forked over again and again. And then every time I'd stick my toe in the waters of dating, I'd get a foot bitten off. I was like, no, thank you. But waiting tables really sealed the deal for me where I was like, what is the point of this? What is the point of any of this? Like, are y'all in a play? Did someone hand you a script? Because you act like you're acting, but you're really bad actors. And so honestly, it wasn't until I actually met healthy couples that I was like, oh, he makes your life better? How does that work? He's not a parasite, vampire, soul digger. But I want to show you uh, something that, so I looked up, I just Googled um, Valentine's presents after the person made that comment because I was like, Okay, surely someone has written an article on this and I couldn't find any articles. I'm sure they're out there, but I couldn't find it in my search. But this, this Reddit came up and it is so enlightening because the last video I did was talking about men who, who are not in committed relationships, who will do, um, either they will purposely not do Valentine's Day to keep you at arm's length and breadcrumb you, or they will do something like Valentine's Day, even though you're in a situation and you're not dating, they'll take you out and make you feel important to keep you trapped. Or as someone mentioned in the comments of that last video, that she had someone who dragged her on for four years, but it was, didn't want commitment and would take her to weddings. As is plus one, like, you know, like I said, they'll introduce you to their family. They'll do all this stuff that like shows that they like you're in a relationship, but will say, I don't want a relationship. I'm not ready. I'm afraid of commitment. Blah, 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 blah. All the stupid excuses they get so that they can have access to you, have an open relationship because you're not dating. So it's not cheating. And really, they just want to mine all your gold because they're the diggers. But look at this story because this is an example of like men who are in not in relationships will sometimes use these little very high emotional um high emotional stakes situations like valentine's day weddings stuff like that meeting the family to trick you and confuse you into thinking that you might have a chance to be in a relationship with them if he can just drag you on a little bit longer and that man will either not ever commit to you or he'll give you a shut up ring but then there's also the stories of men who do nothing on purpose on valentine's day even though you are dating so that you will be used to and groomed for accepting nothing and be grateful for anything that they give you if they just don't hate you you're doing okay or they will do just a little bit but with so much resentment that you almost wish they did nothing so i want you to see this this relationship is so common this story so this is a this was from eight years ago and i think one of the reasons why the comments are so terrible is because in eight years women especially because of tiktok and youtube and all the social media women are realizing just how much their partners hate them because women are talking now so eight years ago we just thought men were dumb now we know it's all a ruse they're not dumb they're just um it's mind control and they're manipulating us anyway she's uh 29 her boyfriend's 34. a 34 year old man knows better Okay, so this is all a choice. Uh, hi, I need some advice. My boyfriend and I had our first Valentine's Day yesterday. We have mentioned the holidays in, in conversation before. And while it's not very important to both of us, I don't know, I think it sounds pretty important to you. He knows I love getting flowers and some nice words at least. I mean, it, it is important to you. Okay, so this woman is actually, I, I, want, to, I want also, because it's not just men. Like women, we live with a lot of, um, we, we've been mind controlled by these men for so long. We live with a lot of unhealed trauma, a lot of daddy issues or issues of, of abuse or something, right? From our, you know, it doesn't have to be a dad, but a lot of times this dad set us up for this crap. Um, or a lack of knowledge and awareness of just how malicious 
men and selfish men are because of patriarchy and the entitlement that it teaches them and so she's lying to herself a lot here so i'm gonna call that out she says i've made that point many times before so no mind reading or surprises there okay i get it but also like valentine's day is important to you okay you can say that um okay we woke up in the morning and he left to grab his dog from his place walk her and bring her over to my place okay already it sounds like you are taking care of his dog right why is he bringing the dog over to your house hmm? okay you're his yeah, this is exactly what he's gonna do like already uh do, like men uh, pay attention to what they do if he's having you take care of his dog uh, you're gonna be the primary default parent and this man is going to be you're gonna be a married single mom okay so already i hate this guy i hate to hate's a strong word but don't like him uh, in the meantime, I talked to my mom on the phone who had just received a huge bouquet of flowers by my cousin's uh, new... What? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought the cousin sent her mom... Okay, I get it. Her mom's telling her about this. Uh, I guess that made me excited for my boyfriend to come back and give me some. Okay, and this is why I hate Valentine's Day. is because if one dude gives a woman all this crap, all the other women, we start comparing ourselves and we're like, wait, what is... And that's actually a good thing because then we start being like, well, my husband would never do that for me. Pay attention to those little thoughts because it's probably true. But also, this whole like keeping up with the Joneses crap and the performance, it like, it's all, it's just, I hate it. I hate the pressure that it puts. But Valentine's Day, again, is a really good litmus test for where, where you're at in your relationship. Maybe it set my expectations too high. Probably. <laughs> because we're going to find out about this guy in a minute. I don't know. He came back with, an, okay, I don't mean expectations high about what you should, what you deserve and what you should get from a partner. I mean expectations too high in terms of this man. This man, yeah, you're delusional. Um, <clears throat> he came back with nothing <laughs> except his dog that she now has to dog sit. I was disappointed but sort of tried to brush it off and thought maybe he'll get me something later has something planned <laughs> no i mentioned that i had a talk with my mom and how nice it was uh of the new guy to give her flowers hint hint all my boyfriend says was i'm sorry you didn't get any oh see now i hate him N -n i'm sorry that some some ghost didn't give you i don't know i'm so i'm sorry that that person did that to you as if he's not that person God, that kind of threw me off guard because there was no doubt now that he hadn't intended to get me any any for me and wasn't planning on surprising me later i got disappointed and sort of kept silent processing it he asked me what's wrong what's wrong they're not dumb what, what's wrong i can't imagine did that ghost not give you flowers <laughs> so i told him it, it would have been nice to have some flowers that's all here we go he brought up how i made him feel like a piece of crap this is a why did you make me hate you why did you make me treat you this way? Why why did you wear that dress? You made me grape you. This is grape culture right here. Right here. Why do you This is a man who doesn't care about how she feels. She he's just like, "Why do I have to feel bad for something that I chose not to do knowing that you care about this?" God, it's Darvo, y'all. Uh, and he insisted on going out and getting some. This is how they pun. Okay, fine. I'll get you flowers. Is that what you want? This is all manipulation. This man is going to be abusive. Maybe not physically, but emotionally. This is the kind of man will take years off of your life. Literally, slowly unalive you through your nervous system. Do not date men who do this, please. Because they're not even... This is their first Valentine's Day. That means they've been get together less than a year. But, you know, long enough for her to, for them to be committed... Uh, like, I told him it would feel sort of forced now and self-serving because, you know, because he just didn't want to feel bad about himself. That's right. Exactly. Thanks. I'm glad you called him out. He left anyway and got them. Of course he did because now he wants to punish you for ever asking for anything more from him. It took, <laughs> it, it took a little for me to just 
be completely cool. Don't do this. Don't be the cool girl, y'all. This is the cool girl stuff. This is what they want you to do. But as the day went on, we went back to being normal. Yeah, because you gaslit yourself into thinking you don't care. He made breakfast. We sat outside in the sun and took a walk with his dog. Because now he's going to two birds, one stone. I, he needs to walk his dog. So he's like, hey, come with me so we can spend time together. When really he just needs, you know, to take the dog out. After that, we went to the restaurant on the lake that I had mentioned the day before. We had, like, now this guy knows he's in trouble if he doesn't do something, but he's going to continue to punish her. Uh, we had our food and had a really nice time, and I, and, and, and I thought, and, and split the bill! He won't even pay for a Valentine's Day dinner. Ugh, he's a 50-50-er. This is a, this is an inch, Mel, red pill guy. It won't even, I'm guessing they do 50-50 on everything. If he won't even buy her Valentine's dinner. Uh, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to go over to the boat docks next to the restaurant and just hang out by the water. The mood got sort of tense and I had no idea why. He got quiet and didn't say much. I asked him if he liked the water too. <laughs> Look at her doing all this emotional labor. Hey, ha, ha. And he reminded me how I had asked him twice already in our time together and how I seemed to forget things. Okay, whatever. I think I mainly wanted to make small talk. Yeah, that's what you're doing because the, the mood is tense and being around men who are weaponizing their moods to control you is annoying. So she's like, hey, 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 hey isn't the water nice? Oh, this is so exhausting, y'all. <laughs> So she's just trying to make small talk and didn't think very deeply about the question. We left and he and went to this little dog park by the water he, that he wanted to show you. He wants to show you a dog park. He's probably like, hey, babe, this is where I want you to walk my dog because you're already taking care of him. Like, oh, you want to show me a dog park? Uh, don't ever show me a dog park. That is not impressive to me. This is the place where your dog takes craps and almost gets in fights with dogs. Like, what? What? It was a nice place. And we walked around, oh, she's so delusional, y'all. And we walked around there, but the mood was still greatly different than it was before the docks. After that, I suggested some drinks nearby, and I'd say that's when it went south. <laughs> We're one or two in. Okay, so he's like, okay, I guess we'll get drinks. Uh, one or two drinks in, and he told me why he was weirded out by the dock. He thought that was a place I had been with my ex and brought up a past mistake from tw May 20. What? Okay, oh, this is all manipulation. I told him I'd never been there with anyone, but I really liked the spot. I told him that I've gone there in the past by myself, so she wanted to share this place that she thinks is special, right? And he... <laughs> He sort of didn't believe me. Sort of? He didn't. Or he probably did, but it's literally, this man is manipulating her. These men will pick fights so that she feels bad all day as a deflection so that she doesn't have the right or the energy or the time to be mad at him for him sucking. The alcohol was probably speaking as well. <laughs> Whatever. Do not blame their actions on alcohol. Of course, then I brought up how disappointing it was to not get anything for Valentine's Day. Not even a compliment from him. He just got angry and defensive. It's something he does a lot. Here we go. Okay, this happens all the time. Leave him. This man is going to abuse you. Oh, we drove my car. We drove with my car, my gas. Ah, my gas money split the bill. Oh, and he got me flowers that I had to ask for. It felt all very disappointing as the night. So, uh, yeah, again, th this man, he's a hobo schedule. Hobo. Gold digger. She's paying. He's probably living with her rent free, honestly. Okay, sorry. I'm getting so distracted with all my anger. <laughs> uh, as the night went on, things actually got mean. Oh, oh, uh-oh. Um, I tried to, I read this a while ago. I forget. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I tried, I tried to stay quiet and calm. Not may, not saying much, actually, and he went on about things I did wrong in the past. Oh, my God. Okay, this man is abusive. This this is abuse. Like, I know that people don't take this seriously, and they're like, nah, he never laid a hand on me. This? Th please read the book. Uh, why does he do that? You will start to see all of this differently when you start to see how intentionally men use their bad moods and the pos tiny 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 possibility of violence to control you that's what they're doing this like look because she that's what she did 
As the night went, I, I tried to stay quiet and calm. Of course she did. She doesn't want to die. Women don't want men to be in bad mood, so we do what they ask us to do to make sure the king baby doesn't decide to cut our head off and put it in a refrigerator. So he's complaining about all the things that she did, how the flowers cost him $50 because you're not even worth that much. According to this man, you're not, you're like, he's pissed that he had to spend any money on you. Of course, because I'm sure he's a hobo. And then this, how I'm smiling at other people and how we look like we're not having a good time. I just told him it makes me sad. The more defensive, defensive and angry he got, the sadder I got. But he somehow made me feel like it was all my fault. That's what they do. And here's the thing. This is why, this is why I want women to tap into your rage, your righteous anger, because this kind of stuff makes us sick. I know she's doing this to protect herself in the moment, but this is what they do to us. They make it so that we're not allowed to be angry. Let me just tell you right now, that abusive relationship, I was never allowed to be angry, ever. And so I pushed it and put, I made myself sick. I was literally in the emergency room with this big giant white thing that was literally like I almost had to get my tonsils removed. I had to have an IV and I know it's because I was biting my tongue, biting my tongue, shoving it down, pretending like I'm not enraged all the time by the way I'm being treated because he was the only person who was allowed to be angry in the relationship. And let me tell you something, not only did that make me sick. But once I actually got into a healthy relationship with a man who is not afraid of anger, a woman's anger, and who makes me feel safe, holy cow, did I tap into some rage. Punching pillows! Like, I actually, I had to un, like, vomit out decades of rage of what all the men like this and from childhood essay and all kinds of stuff. I've had to get it out of me. And here's the thing, if you don't do that in the right environment, if you don't learn how to do that in the right way, I become a very scary person to be around. Luckily, my husband can handle it. Uh, he intuitively just knew how to handle it. And he, I mean, I, I have to do a whole video on this, honestly. But I finally tapped into my rage because I was a the safe person. So the more we do this, the more we actually end up harming innocent bystanders because this Rage is righteous. We should be mad about this, but we pretend we're not to <laughs> for our survival. Th this is also, and I probably should make a whole nother video on this. This, I believe, is one of the reasons why we have all these Karens out there who are literally terrorizing anyone they have power over, especially black, indigenous, and other people of color, because we won't deal with this. If we don't deal with this, we end up harming a lot of people. Now, I'm not saying that white women are the only ones who have rage that we haven't experienced. I am just saying that we got to deal with our anger. And this is what all men, not all men, you know what I'm saying? This is what all, most of us have had men in our lives, whether we dated them, we had fathers like this, we had brothers like this. And we also, I'm sure, have bosses like this and the strangers in public who are doing things to us that we know they shouldn't be doing. And we're just like, we should be mad, right? And we don't get to be mad. Somebody one day, or multiple people one day, will be on the receiving end of that rage when that sleeping giant wakes up. And watch out. We can do a lot of harm when we deny ourselves anger for a sense of justice for things the way that we've been abused and exploited. And this honestly is one reason why I want women to be free of this. Because when we aren't, we don't make good allies to anybody. Because all it takes is one trigger and we're like, bah! we're scary. So this that little caveat is just for like, I'm just talking about my experience as a white woman and what I've learned is that one of the reasons why my feminism needs to be intersectional uh, is because I'm a very dangerous person. But my feminism doesn't need to just be learning and, and uh, you know, unpacking. It needs to be on a personal level, an interpersonal. It's emotional too, right? This is deep, deep work. And when I don't do both at the same time, 
the anger that was bottled from all these men that exploited me and harmed me, stalked me, graped me, murdered me. Somebody's going to pay for that. And usually that person is not uh, deserving of that. It's usually the safe people, the kind people, the benevolent people who get this when these forkers are the ones who deserve it. So I'm just saying, I really want uh, people to focus on our, uh, women to focus on our, our anger and where it comes out, wh who it should be directed at, because this really is a big part of um, decentering men and unpacking all of this mind control and trauma. All women I know have been traumatized men. I've never met one who hasn't been. Big T, little T, a whole bag, sack of big T's, uh, but we all have it. And we all need to face it or we're never going to get free. And we're going to make terrible um, feminists, to be honest, or womanists, intersectional feminists. So I don't know. I'm sorry. I went off there. So with all that, look at this. I just get so, I get more and more scared for this woman every sentence I read. Left, went home, and I told him to please leave. I was crying at that point. He got so angry. How dare you be mad at me for the things that I did? Again, men use their anger and the threat of violence to control us. And he's doing it right here. He grabbed his beers from the fridge, looked around. He said, what else is mine? Uh, talked to his dog, said, oh my God. Oh, she doesn't want you here anyway. You just annoy her. No, you, she, no, I'm sure she loves the dog. Probably more than you, bro. She's probably annoyed. Actually, she probably has no feelings about at this at all. But if she is angry at the dog, it's because you're probably making her take care of this dog. The same way you'll make her take care of kids if you baby trap her. Look at this. I don't recall it all. He just turned into a giant angry baby. Mm, there we go. King baby. Don't upset the baby. Pacify the baby with the, oh, it's okay. <laughs> no, no more. God, we, oh, we exhaust ourselves trying to pacify these terrifying babies that could kill us. And I, and it's actually very disrespectful to call them babies because babies are amazing. But I just say that because that, they, they literally act like babies with no emotional regulation when they actually do. <laughs> it's all intentional. I guess I can't voice disappointment without him reacting this way. Uh, yeah, it's a him problem, not a you problem, honey. I was just wanting conversation about it, but it's hard with him. He sent me messages after he went home saying things like, I mean nothing to you. I thought you wanted me. I do everything except take you out and buy you flowers or do literally anything. But it doesn't matter. Nah. Flowers you made me buy. You don't even really care about those. So melodramatic, guilt shifting. Okay, I'm glad she's aware of this. He's not the victim. I have no idea how to deal with that. What do you guys think? Like, okay. The only solution to this is to dump him. But this is where women are at. Women will go on to Reddit and be like, am I the a-hole for um, being mad that he threw a chair at me and baby trapped me and then like tried to unalive my dog? Am I the a-hole? Like the, the Reddits are crazy like that. And then the men are like, am I an a-hole for trying to murder somebody? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Women will be like, am I, is it me? Yes, you have some trauma. You have accountability in terms of our delusion and unpacking blah, 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 blah. But the, you should be mad. Look at these answers. But first of all, I think your reaction was a bit petty. <laughs> I'm not going to read anymore. Fuck you. Shut up, Ava Wolf. this. She says, oh, by the way, thanks for your feedback, guys. Thanks for answering. I should have mentioned that I made a t-shirt for him and me. Sort of silly gift with drawings of, his, dra drawings of both of us that we each can wear. I ordered it, but it didn't arrive yesterday. But today, I told him about the during this fight. I wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> I don't think I, I didn't think I'd get nothing. I didn't think I'd get nothing. <laughs> not even a compliment. <laughs> he literally started off this whole thing like, Valentine's is not very important to me. I don't really care. But I did all this. And I made it very clear I wanted flowers and compliments. That that's really important to me. <laughs> I also want women to be more honest with ourselves. You don't have to tell these men that this stuff is important to you. You really shouldn't be educating men on how to love you. I don't disagree that it's sometimes helpful. Oh, look at you asleep. Oh. I don't disagree that sometimes you have to communicate what you like, what you don't like, whatever. Like, for instance, my husband knows not to buy me flowers. I don't, I mean, it's not that I hate flowers, but they are so not my priority. And I feel like that's a waste of money. 
So I would be like, oh my God, you spent good money on this crap. Like I, it's not that I, it's not that I hate flowers and I would never like them, but it is not something that brings me joy. And my husband knows what brings me joy. So his way of showing me love is very specific to me. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't communicate these things. But what I am saying is that you have to train the man who loves you like he's a dog. I'm sorry, that's actually insulting to dogs to say this. My dog is is uh, cares more about me and is more uh, plugged into me and my emotions. Like seriously, this dog knows when I'm upset. This dog knows everything. All right, like the sa- almost the same way I have a thermometer up the butt of every person around me, especially men, because that's how I stay alive. Uh, so yeah, this is insulting your dog. But what I am saying is this man is aware of what she wants and needs, and he purposely chooses to withhold giving her those things, lest she expect those things, because the whole point is to beat down our sense of self-worth and self-esteem so that we will accept less and less and less and less and do more and more and more and more to win them over so they'll finally love us, and that man will not only not ever love her, he is probably going to harm her physically, either outright with violence or non-violently, which is just as violent through her nervous system. This is life or death. And I want women to really start taking it that seriously instead of just being, I don't know, I'm kind of bored. Maybe I'll just like, you know, text that ex who hates me. Mm -mm. You will pay a big price for giving these men chance after chance after chance, benefit after benefit after benefit of the doubt. And you literally could die. It's literally how I almost died. It was like, well, what's the worst that could happen? Mm. Oh, he could almost drive you over a cliff. Thelma and Louise style. Minus the feminism and hand-holding in like a cool person. Like this is life or death. And I want to end on one last thing because I just saw this. I've talked to you about being a waitress. I've talked to you about people who worked in the pharmacy. Now I actually want to show you a little story from one of my subscribers who worked in um, the flower shops. And this is also enlightening. You really can learn a lot about men and how they feel about women and marriage and relationships by working in places where men have to perform love that they don't feel, like restaurants, flower shops, pharmacies on uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Day. So I always block out the name because I don't know if you want your name blasted on my page. Um, But if you want me to tag you, I will because I really appreciate these comments. I'm a retired floral designer. I started calling it (laughs) Valloween. years ago because I shudder thinking back to the holiday that brought me in that brought men into flower shops well this is one reason why I just love YouTube because I get long comments like this that are always so amazing the stories I can't tell you how much I live from the comment section because there's no character limit and thank you all for all everyone who that leaves stuff like this. Um, the mantrums that were thrown when they come into a flower shop at six, seven. <laughs> okay, you're a good writer too. I love it. The specifics, the details, that's how that's that's great storytelling and writing. Uh 6 17 p.m. on Valentine's Day and didn't understand why they couldn't get a dozen red flowers thrown together in a vase. Dude, all we have left are dish <laughs> dish garden suitables for a funeral. <laughs> Oh, y'all crack me up. Take your arms to the gas station and see if they have any blown out roses dyed blue with food coloring in a rancid jar next to the cash register. God, y'all are all so funny. Uh, Needless to say, flowers are not a a necessary gift for my husband to me on Halloween. I can imagine never wanting that after working in that industry. What gets me is that men and women both know the toss her some breadcrumbs game yet we just sit back and take it while they they lamp earth off as they portion out our daily dosage oh never settle ladies never it's not worth it please stop thinking that this is just how they are and you know they, they just are their little boys that don't understand or they're just dumb men are so smart at manipulating and praying and gaslighting and darvoing. God, please stop thinking that we're smarter than them. I mean, we are in so many ways, but when it comes to exploitation and abuse, these guys are next level. Next level, they know exactly what they're doing and it's all about control and power over you. And our work is looking at that ugly, 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 ugly truth 
and accepting it. The sooner we accept it, the more we can be free of it. And sometimes that means tapping out for a while and just dating ourselves and working only on our community and friendship. That honestly is, that's what helped me. And most of the women I know, that's what helps them stop the cycle of relationship violence outright or the less obvious kind. Be so careful out there, y'all. You are the love of your life.